Greetings to all. In the last lecture, we have discussed the realization of a DC mission from the basic principles of a magnetic field, right. In this lecture, we will discuss how to realize the other missions from the basic principles of a magnetic field, okay. So, if you will see here, the DC motor is in this manner, right. One side field winding is there, other side rotating armature is there through brushes we are giving the DC supply, but it is a type of AC mission. Now, instead of uh, giving through brushes and commutators can we avoid it, can we give the AC directly and can we realize some type of mission. For that we will swap the stator to rotor side and rotor to stator side. This field poles will push it to rotor side that is the moving object now and stator thing this is the stator thing right that we will push it outside that will be stationary now. We can see this one. So, earlier in a DC mission we are giving AC to this uh, armature. Now, that armature we are uh, visualizing as a stator side that is stationary object and we are feeding AC directly no need of any brushes and commutators with respect to this structure stator structure ok. Now, at the rotor side we have a field poles because the swapping of stator to rotor side and rotor to stator side is done. To feed the rotor or to excite the rotor windings we require the brushes because the rotor requires only DC supply field poles and stator side we have the variable fields because of the AC excitation. Rotor supply we are giving through brushes we are able to eliminate here commutators, but brushes are required to make the excitation for the rotating object or rotating field poles at the rotor side that is this one. So, stator side AC supply we are giving and it will generate the variable fields and rotor side DC supply with constant field poles are there. Then based on the attractions and repulsions of these two uh, things it will work. This motor is called as a synchronous motor. Why synchronous motor is there means like name is there is a locking like at the stator side. let us consider north pole is there and this is a one pole pair this side south and north in this manner it uh, we are able to generate it at the stator side. Rotor side north and south is there then based on the repulsion it will rotate and the next situation it will happen here south and here north at the rotor side and stator side we have south north this side and north south this side because magnetic fields are uh, dipoles right. So, here magnetic locking is there. So, if stator magnetic fields are rotating this fields are rotating let us assume it because magnetic locking is there then we have considered that how to uh, break that magnetic locking to rotate the rotor right. If we will consider rotor also rotating, but stator side the mechanical structure is not rotating only magnetic fields are rotating and rotor is rotating along with the magnetic fields at the stator side. Once the magnetic locking is happened here magnetic locking is happened. So, along with the stator fields the rotor also rotating with this magnetic locking principles because of this reason this mission we will call it as a synchronous motor or synchronous mission. Here the torque is depends upon the mutual terms because both sides we have uh, excitations ok. The reluctance terms because of the magnetic locking the reluctance terms will become 0 there is no a variation in the reluctance ok d l 1 by d theta and d l 2 by 
d theta is not changing or I can say reluctance uh, based force is not generating in this particular mission because of that reason we will see only magnetic uh, mutual torque okay. The torque with respect to the reluctance terms will equals to 0. In the other words we can say the self inductance with respect to the stator side and self inductance with respect to the rotor side is not varying with respect to the angular displacement of a rotor because of that reason these two terms are 0. Now the brushes are required in this particular mission right to get the excitation for the rotor but how to remove these brushes again. For that do the same thing but instead of swapping stator and rotor stator side you assume that variable field uh, poles we are creating with respect to the AC supply rotor side same structure is there similar to the DC motor assume that we are shorting the coils instead of connecting through brushes and commutators to the DC supply we are shorting it. One side we have the variable flux okay here flux is varying with respect to the AC supply and one side closed coil is there then what it will happen based upon the Faraday's law there is a induced current in a closed coil okay this is the magnet and other side we have a coil closed coil okay. Then if we will bring the magnetic, uh, magnetic fields towards the coil then automatically a current will induce in this particular coil right based upon the Faraday's law. This induced current will produce the magnetic fields that is in this manner consider only one conductor is there current carrying conductor here this side dot and this side cross then based upon the thumb rule we can find the magnetic fields directions here I am even though multiple conductors are there at the rotor side I am considering one conductor for simplified example. So the north pole will form this side and south pole will form this side okay based upon the attractions and repulsions of these two fields one field at the stator side and one field at the rotor side based upon the attractions and repulsions it will work. We have seen the DC mission and we have seen the synchronous mission and now induction mission all missions are working based upon the same principle that is attractions and repulsions of two magnetic fields okay. So here the torque is mutual torque again there is no reluctance torque terms d l 1 by d theta l l 1 1 d l 2 2 by d theta terms are equals to 0 there is no variation in inductance with respect to the rotor position okay and the reluctance term is equals to 0 only mutual torque with respect to the current i 1 and current i 2 i 1 is with respect to the stator side and i 2 is with respect to the rotor side based upon these two currents or based upon the resultant fluxes or magnetic fields we will see a torque mutual interaction between these two things okay. Here we solved the brushes and commutator problems there is no requirement of brushes there is no requirement of commutators in this particular mission. Now we will see how to avoid the brushes and commutators in a other manner in a different uh, solutions. Consider the study 3 stator side we have the excitations rotor side is a permanent magnet the brushes and commutators requirement uh, is there because of the uh, excitations at the rotor right windings at the rotor if we have a windings at the rotor side then only we require the brushes and commutators right to give the uh, power. If we will consider the permanent magnet here okay there is no requirement of brushes and commutators consider stator is this one and rotor is 
permanent magnet and stator is excited with variable supply that means we can change the poles at the stator side. Consider this is set 1 uh, pole pair at the stator side then here the magnetic locking is there again how to avoid this magnetic locking. So, bring one more coil here like or one more pore pair. So, based upon the attractions and repulsion it will work right. So, the rotor will move in this fashion the rotor is rotating in this manner based upon the attractions and repulsions of the magnets. Now, what it will happen again magnetic locking is existed between the north and south pole here this is north and this is south there is a magnetic locking. To get the rotation next then we will excite the set 1 stator pole uh, set 1 and again set 2 like this manner we can excite the coil 1 and coil 2 at the stator side then we can get the continuous rotation. We will see the currents here this is the current with respect to the pole uh, pair 1 uh, 2 and this is current with respect to the pole pair 1 ok. If we will excite properly then we can see the uh, rotation at the rotor side. This type of mission we will call it as a BLDC motor. We have one field uh, pole pair at the stator side and based upon the attraction and repulsion the rotor will rotate and in order to get the smoother rotation we kept the second coil set also. So, if we will excite coil 1 the rotor will try to align with respect to the coil 1 if we will excite the coil 2 rotor will try to align with respect to the coil 2. So, based upon the attractions and repulsions it is working that motor is called as a BLDC motor ok. And now if we will replace the stator side concentrated field poles or concentrated winding kind of structure with distributed conductors ok. And if we will give the AC supply then that motor is called as a BL uh, brushless AC motor. The BLDC motor is also a AC motor, but from DC to AC we are uh, doing here the conversion by utilizing the power converter. These coils requires the variable supply only like this manner. Here we can see the red color waveform also a AC and blue color waveform also a AC. The operation with respect to the BLDC motor is a AC mission, but because of the converter arrangement and outside uh, DC supply we will name it as a brushless DC motor. There is no brushes right that is why the name it uh, call it as a brushless DC motor and instead of DC and concentrated windings we will utilize the AC supply directly and we can uh, utilize the distributed windings then that motor is called as a brushless AC motor and also call it as a permanent magnet synchronous motor. Here the torque is nothing but a mutual interaction of magnetic flux as well as the stator, stator flux ok. One side we have the current other side we have the flux linkages or flux with respect to the permanent magnet interaction of these two will give the torque in this particular missions. And if we will consider the study 1 where there is no magnets, there is no brushes, there is no commutators how to avoid the brushes that is what our objective. In that particular case we will utilize the study 1 rotor side we have the soft iron based upon the applied field at the stator side we rotor will try to align uh, towards the magnetic field. We can see here in this particular case we are exciting the stator pole pair 1 or pole set 1 then rotor is aligned towards the uh, applied magnetic field. The induced poles here this is south and this is north right just iron piece is attracted towards the magnet. Next in order to make the rotation we have to use the one more coil that is this one. Now if we will excite this coil rotor will move in this manner our iron piece will try to align towards this set 2 and assume there is no set 1 
we are removing the excitation for set 1 and we are exciting the set 2 then rotor is aligned in this manner we can see that one rotor is rotating in a clockwise manner and it is aligned with that uh, excited coil. So, this particular mission we will call it as a switched reluctance mission ok. This mission is works based upon the reluctance principles. The category with respect to the reluctance principle working missions are SRM motor, synchronous reluctance mission where the stator structure is distributed winding and rotor is a iron piece and stepper motors also works upon the variable reluctance principles, but uh, some hybrid motors also came to make the smaller step uh, uh, rotation, but in a conventional stepper motor with larger number of uh, larger size of the poles and lesser number of teeth then the stepper motor also works on the variable reluctance principle and there is no magnets and torque is only reluctance torque in this particular uh, case. This is the realization of a electrical missions with respect to the basic principles of magnetic fields. Now, we will see exactly what type of windings arrangement and what kind of uh, mission structures are available with respect to the existing uh, missions. So, we have concluded as of now any rotating mission requires two fields to generate a torque based upon the attractions and repulsions it will work. This is the conclusion right from this uh, last lecture as well as in this lecture based upon the attractions and repulsions of the two fields it is generating a torque. Now, what kind of windings we require? Generally windings requires to generate these two fields ok. If a permanent magnet is there then there is no need of windings, but if electromagnet is there to generate these two fields we require the windings. Winding is a arrangement or a group of conductors to create the magnetic fields. First we will see the winding structures and arrangement for the DC motors ok. That we can see here this is the DC mission concentrated winding at this particular point stator side those are the field poles and the distributed windings at the rotor side ok with the armature ok. This is the armature structure it is a rotating one and these are the commutators and brushes arrangement will be there separately. The stator side field winding is there that is generating field 1, rotor side armature winding is there that is generating field 2. The interaction of these two fields will results the torque ok. And the application of DC missions the principle is same with respect to the DC series motor and shunt motor or any type of motor the interaction of these two fields will generate a torque. In a DC series motor what are the applications we can see here we are utilizing in cranes, air, uh, air comp compressors, lifts, elevators etcetera. Similarly, DC motor, uh, DC shunt motor applications, permanent magnet DC motor applications and uh, compound motor applications also we can see in this slide ok. We are mainly utilizing in conveyors, elevators, compressors, rolling mills and centrifugal pumps, blowers etcetera, fans also ok. And now, we will see the mission with uh, respect to the permanent magnets no brushes and no commutators. Just replace the field windings here this is the one ok. This is the field winding side there is no magnet sorry there is uh, magnets are there electromagnets are replaced with permanent magnets and here uh, windings at the uh, road, uh, rotor side. So, this is the stator concentrated winding and rotor uh, magnetic uh, thing there is no requirement of brushes and similarly here also inner rotor and outer stator here inner stator this side inner stator and outer rotor ok. 
So, both types we require the two fields the interaction of these two fields will results the torque one field is coming with respect to the electromagnet at the stator side and one field is coming with respect to the permanent magnets these are the brushless DC missions the applications will be same as the DC missions in the low power applications uh, like uh, laptops and other places also we are utilizing the BLDC missions now and even ceiling fans also we can see these are the few applications with respect to the brushless DC missions. Now, I will show the uh, exact like practical missions how the distributed winding and concentrated windings will exist in the missions. Okay. So, we can see here this is the distributed type of a winding okay. you can see in the core this is the distributed winding and this is the concentrated winding. Okay. We can consider these are the field poles concentrated windings and it is a distributed winding. The number of slots are high more number of slots are there and more coils be placed in the stator structure and this is the rotor structure for induction motor whenever we are discussing the induction motor I will show you this thing this is the squirrel cage rotor. Okay. Concer distributed winding concentrated winding and some squirrel cage type of rotors we can see here. Okay. For the synchronous motors the stator side we have the distributed winding that is what uh, I have shown now distributed winding at the stator side that is this one and the concentrated winding at the rotor side like this kind of uh, structure it is a uh, not for the synchronous motor, but the example for the concentrated winding I am showing in this image or in this mission. So, coming back to the PPT here we can see the st uh, stator side winding and rotor side windings based upon the attractions and repulsions of the fields created by these two windings it will work and permanent magnet synchronous motor the rotor side we have the permanent magnets and stator side it is normal distributed winding same as this one okay. and the applications of the permanent magnets we can see in this uh, slide we are utilizing in mission tools motor generator sets electric vehicles and uh, timing devices and belt device uh, belt driven reciprocating compressors and lifts rolling mills cement mills etc and power factor correction devices and renewable energy systems most of the places we are utilizing the permanent magnet synchronous motor also and induction motor we can see here that is the this one only exactly induction motor is this is the one what I am showing stator side distributed winding and rotor side squirrel cage there is no winding closed coils okay, or shorted coils at the rotor side and distributed winding at the stator side. So, these two things like uh, with respect to the distributed winding and AC supply we are getting the variable fields okay, or rotating magnetic fields we are getting at the stator side and rotor side this variable fields will induce the currents in the closed coils this induced currents will produce the magnetic fields at the rotor side also the interaction of these two fields okay, stator side fields and rotor side fields will generate a torque that is the principle of induction motor or mutual induction principle also same. Okay. The applications of the induction motor we can see here we are utilizing in fans, electric vehicles and uh, paper industry and water pumping applications and rolling uh, roller tables, cranes uh, uh, most of the applications we are utilizing the induction motors also. It is the driving force and greater than 70 percent to 80 percent we are utilizing the induction motors only one type is the squirrel cage other type is the slip ring induction motor where the coils are uh, closed coils are there copper windings here the shorted copper bars are aluminum bars but here 
copper windings are there that is slip ring induction motor this is squirrel cage induction motor there are two types are available those two things but principle is same based on the mutual in, uh, induction principle it is working next switched reluctance machine stator side we have the concentrated winding which will generate the field one and rotor side just simple iron piece is there just if we will uh, electromagnet is there and we are placing the iron piece near to that then automatically the iron piece will attract it towards the uh, electromagnet that is the principle of switched reluctance machine based upon the variable reluctance it is working and synchronous reluctance mission is same but the stator side the distributed winding is there okay rotor side simple iron piece based on the reluctance it is working applications we are mainly seeing in electric vehicles two wheelers and other places at present we are not uh, ex prototypes are uh, are not available with respect to the electric vehicles in future we will see the uh, switch reluctance mission based uh, vehicles also okay but in other places where we are utilizing the switch reluctance missions we can see here coil winding as well as unwinding equipments gen, uh, general mission uh, machinery like pumps and fans etc and uh, lifting missions and manufacturing uh, equipments and etc these are the few applications with respect to switch reluctance mission next variable type uh, variable reluctance type of motor is stepper motor okay here we can see stator side is a concentrated winding and rotor side we have the soft iron or some magnet based it is a hybrid motor to get the small steppings if you want larger step value or lesser number of poles then we can go with the soft iron piece also in a stepper motor we want a uh, like smaller angular rotation right small step change for that reason we have the permanent magnet on top of that iron piece with small steppings that is what we can see in this image ok. Whenever the opposite poles will come into the picture then the attraction will happen and the same poles will repel each other if the number depends upon the number of teeth at the rotor side the angle of rotation will matters in a stepper motors. The application of stepper motors we can see in a robotics, digital watches and printers xy plotters and motion control systems and these are the different missions which are existed uh, in the literature DC missions, AC missions and other type of missions all missions working on the same principle the attractions and repulsions of the magnetic poles ok. How we are creating this magnetic fields will differentiate from one particular motor to other particular motor. In the synchronous motors if let us say permanent magnets are there then one side permanent magnets other side electromagnets. So, only the creation of magnetic fields will differ in one motor to other motor, but the working principle is same as the attractions and repulsions. These are the different missions bound field, permanent magnet missions and uh, synchronous missions, asynchronous missions that is induction motors and reluctance missions and universal missions where it will take the DC as well as AC and servo motors and vernier permanent magnet and hybrid permanent magnet just a slight variation with respect to the designs ok and electrostatic motors and static uh, missions like transformers these are the different type of existing missions. With this I am concluding the uh, this lecture, in this lecture we have discussed the realization of electrical missions and winding structures with respect to the different missions, thank you.